In all the previous chapters, or all the previous videos, what we've been talking about so far are gases, where we talk about one of them at a time. However, in many cases, you'll have mixtures of gases together. Let's take probably one of the most, the most common example would be the air you're breathing right now from the atmosphere. The air in the atmosphere is made of multiple gases. It's about 78% nitrogen. It's about 21% oxygen. It's about 0.9% argon. It's about 0.04% carbon dioxide. And then there's a few other things. And wow, I wrote that argon pretty poorly. So there are a handful of gases that make up the atmosphere, but it's not just one thing. It's not just oxygen that we need in our lungs. There's a lot of nitrogen in the air. So we need a way to deal with samples like this. How do we think about concepts like pressures and moles when you have samples of gases that are mixtures? Well, to deal with this concept, what we do is we talk about a concept we call partial pressure. So what partial pressure is, is that it is the pressure that a particular gas in a mixture contributes to the overall pressure. To the overall pressure. So how do we think about this? Well, what we know is that when we're working with ideal gases, which is what we're doing in this chapter, we can treat them like each of the gases on their own will contribute a certain amount of pressure and it will be the same for any type of molecule. So every molecule you have under a set of certain temperature and volume condition will apply a certain pressure. You'll notice when we look at the equation, PV equals NRT, none of these care about what type of gas you have. So the N you have for moles, if you have a mole of oxygen, you get the same answer as a mole of nitrogen. That means that every molecule that makes up our sample is going to contribute, and it'll contribute the same amount as that many molecules would always. So one mole of gas will contribute the same amount of pressure, whether it's one mole of oxygen or one mole of nitrogen. It's also important to note that we are assuming these gases behave independently. So we're not worried about a world where the gases might be attracted to each other. So we're agreeing with, which is a fair approximation in many cases, that these gases aren't trying to connect with each other. So we can figure these out all independently. So what that means is we actually have an equation where we can calculate the pressure of each gas. So the way we do this is the pressure of, let's, of some gas A, A will just be a particular gas, will be equal to the moles of that gas times RT over V. And then let's say we've got this sample has two things. So the pressure of B, that's going to be NB times RT over V. And if it had a third thing, it would be pressure C times moles of C times RT over V. The idea behind this is that we can calculate the pressure of each of the compounds independently. And then if you want the total pressure of your sample, you're just going to add all these pressures together. So what this means is if I find all the individual pressures and I add them up, I get my answer. And this matches up with this equation here that P total equals N total times RT over V. Now the reason we can do this is if these gases are in the same container, they're gonna be at the same temperature. If you think about it, when you walk into a room that has nitrogen and oxygen in it, you don't suddenly get cold when you get next to one of the gases and hot when you get next to one of the others because they're all mixed together. So they're at the exact same temperature, they're at thermal equilibrium. The gases are also in the same container in this case. So their volume is constant. That means that because they're in the same room, they're gonna spread out. And so they'll be both equally spread out throughout the room. So you don't have to worry about the volumes being different. The only things that change are the pressures and the number of moles. So those are the two that will be molecule specific. Whereas V and T will be the same for all the gases in your mixture if they're in the same container. So we can use this to, for example, I could tell you how many moles you had of two gases, and then you could figure out what the total pressure would be by finding the pressure of each of them independently and then adding them together. Or you could add up the moles and use this equation down at the bottom if you only needed the total pressure, and then it's just like PV equals NRT, just rearranged. Now, 
There's a second way we sometimes view this equation, and then we'll look at some examples. So another way we talk about this is with a concept called mole fraction. I lost my curve, there we go. So mole fraction, we use this symbol chi. So let's say we have the mole fraction of A. What this means is what fraction of the overall sample, so if we're working with multiple gases, we want to know what fraction of the overall sample is the specific component. So what do we mean by that? So let's say A represents oxygen. So let's say we've got air, and air is mostly nitrogen and oxygen. So the mole fraction of nitrogen and air we said was 79%. So that mole fraction is 0.79. Whereas the mole fraction for oxygen and air was 21, so it's going to be 0 0.21. Ah, sorry about that. So we have our two samples, our nitrogen and oxygen, and so 79% is nitrogen, 21% is oxygen. Now, how did I get this value? So what this is, is we say the mole fraction of A is equal to the moles of A over the total moles. So in this case, we were just told it was 79%. But if you didn't know, and you were instead given numbers, you could plug them into this to get the mole fraction. And then the mole fraction of component B would be moles of B over the total moles. And the reason this matters at all is this is another way we can calculate the pressure of a specific component. So the pressure of A is equal to the mole fraction of A times the total pressure. So for example, let's say our room has a pressure of let's say 0 0.925 atmospheres. What is the pressure of the oxygen? So this is assuming that the oxygen is consistent with the overall values of 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen. We're assuming the problem has told us this. So then what I can do, if I can, there we go. So let's make a little box here. So let's set up this problem. So we have the pressure of oxygen is equal to the mole fraction of oxygen times the total pressure. Well, we know the pressure of oxygen then is going to be equal to 0.21 times 0.925 atmospheres. Note that mole fraction doesn't have a unit. So you did moles divided by moles to calculate it, they cancel. So it doesn't have a unit. So we do 0.21 times 0.925. And we're going to get that the pressure of oxygen is equal to 0 0.19 atmospheres. I only had two sig figs in my in my partial pressure, so or in my mole fraction. So that's all I gave. So this is the pressure of the oxygen portion. You could do the same thing to find the pressure of the nitrogen portion. So the idea is you can figure out how much of your pressure is contributed by a particular compound. So now let's take a look at an example of how we could solve a problem using this. How does this come up practically? What might this look like? So we've got a problem. We have a one liter mixture of helium, neon, and argon, let's say. That has a total pressure. Ah, spell pressure right. Of 662 millimeters of mercury at 298 Kelvin. So you notice the problem has actually given us a lot of information, right? It's given us temperature, a pressure, and a volume already. But it's been a total pressure. So let's say if the partial pressure of helium is, let's say, 322 millimeters of mercury and the partial pressure of neon is, let's say it's 125 millimeters of mercury. What is the mass of the argon? So this problem, the first thing to identify is what they're asking us. So they want to know what is the mass of argon 
And we know our sample is made of three things, helium, neon, and argon. So from all the things we've worked on so far, we know that even before you got to the gas chapter, if I want to know the mass of argon, the best way to get there is to find the moles of argon because I can use moles to transfer into grams using molar mass. So I need to get moles of argon. What we've added in this chapter is if you can get pressure of argon, you can use that partial pressure equation to get from pressure of argon to moles of argon. So we need to know the pressure of our gas because that's what lets us change it into moles. So in this problem, they tell us the total pressure. So we know P total, which is going to be equal to the pressure of the helium plus the pressure of the neon plus the pressure of the argon, which is what we want to know. So we're told our total pressure is 662 millimeters of mercury. And that's equal to the pressure of the helium, which was 322. We were also told the pressure of the neon, which was 125. And then we want to know the pressure of the argon. So we need to subtract 322 and 125 from both sides to get rid of them on the side of the argon. So we take 662 and we subtract 322 and we subtract 125. Well, let's see. I had to put it in my calculator correctly. I accidentally added. And we will get a pressure of 215 millimeters of mercury. So the problem asked us for partial pressure, we would be done there. But instead it asks us for the mass of the argon. So that means I need to get to moles first, and then I need to get to grams. So we take our pressure, 760 millimeters of mercury is one atmosphere. I need this because I can't use my gas constant with our current equation without having it in atmosphere. So I take 215 and divide by 760, and I will get 0 0.283 atmospheres. So now I'm going to take this number and I'm going to move it to the next page, but I have to make a note of these so I can transfer them over. So we know we've got a one liter mixture and we have a temperature of 298 Kelvin. So now on our next page, we'll use that information. We've got our volume is equal to 1.00 liters. Our temperature is equal to 298 Kelvin. And I forgot to write down our mass, or sorry, our pressure, 0.283 atmospheres. So our pressure for our argon is 0.283 atmospheres. So now we want to know N. So we said our pressure of a gas is equal to the moles of said gas times RT over V. That is supposed to be an R. So now we need to rearrange this to solve for N. So that means I'm going to get P argon times volume divided by RT equals N argon. That's I multiply both sides by V and I divided by RT is how I got that. So now I just have to plug these numbers in and make sure the units work. So the pressure is 0.283 atmospheres. Our volume is one liter. Then our R is 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And then our temperature is 298 Kelvin. So we can see our Kelvin cancels and our atmospheres and liters both cancel. So we do that, we get 0.283 times 1 divided by 0 0.0821 and divided by 298. And we do that, I'm going to get 0 0.0116 moles of argon. The problem asked us for grams. So I need to find, where do I have, I don't have my textbook on. So let's see if I can open a web browser on my other screen. So molar mass of argon. Okay, we'll go with that. So one mole of argon has a mass of 39.95 grams. So we plugged it in, 0 0.0. I'm just gonna, yeah, we'll do that like that. And we're gonna get that we would have, let me pull back up my recorder, we'd have 0 0.0. 463 grams of argon. So that would be our mass. So you'll notice in this practice problem, I did a few things. I calculated partial pressure by adding them together. And I found the pressure of a specific one because they gave me all the other pressures. I was also able to solve for moles because I could use PV equals NRT just in this slightly different looking format. 
which is useful when you have multiple molecules and you only want to know about one of them, that's when I use this version because I'm concerned about the parts that change. So in this problem, because they're in the same container, it's pressure and moles that change. That will usually be the case. I cannot think of an example where it would be temperature that would change, but you will occasionally see examples where it's volume that changes, where you're in a container where it's the similar pressure, but it might be that you've got volumes of gas from two different places you're gonna to mix together and you wanna know what volumes to use. So you have to pay attention to your problem, but in most cases, and any time where they're mixed together in the exact same container, you're definitely gonna have P and N be the things that can change in those cases. So an N is always gonna be one of your variables that can change for any circumstance that I can think of. So that's how we deal with partial pressures. And these are also gonna be helpful in our next section because they let us sometimes know how many moles or grams do we have of a specific thing that is a reactant. So let's say I had a reaction now that was gonna use up argon. I could now use this number to then plug into an equation to figure out, oh, how many grams of something else could it make? So that's where this is gonna to start to go into an application. We might wanna have a reaction that uses outside air, but we only need the oxygen as a reactant. So we need to know how many moles of oxygen we have. That way we can use it to combust something. So that's an example of how this comes up. In other cases, it might be a more straightforward question. I'm going back a slide now, where you're only asked to find, let's say the partial pressure of argon or the total pressure by adding up all of these. So you'll also have some that are of those simpler varieties. It's just add a couple numbers up, get an answer. And we'll do that sometimes too, just to make sure we know what partial total pressures are. So we might also do questions like that. So with that, that finishes up our section on partial pressures. What we'll be working on next is working on doing chemical reactions involving gas molecules.